what I say to people, they say, well, Jeff, you do look good in the sense that I wouldn't know you've had a stroke. I said, but that's what a stroke's all about sometimes. It's about, it doesn't, it affects you physically, yes, but it can affect you mentally and emotionally and psychologically. And I was never an emotional person as such, but um, since the stroke, all of a sudden I was seeing emotions like a lot of crying, I'd watch sad things on the television, um, they'd affect me, it was incredible. And my son's the other side of me, um, which I think, I'm a, think, I look back now, I'm probably a better person in a, in a strange sort of way because of the stroke. It's made me look at life in a totally different way. So it wasn't a physical thing for me, it was more psychological and more emotional for me. The emotional side is different for everybody after they've had a stroke. I'm unable to shed a tear. I'm unable to show a lot of emotion that goes along the way. My mother died not long after I had my stroke and I was just unable to shed a tear to, to come along and, and, and get the emotion out of my system. The emotion seems to stay and, and takes a longer time to, to go. In terms of emotions over those 10 years, Wendy's gone from, I not, don't want to live anymore, mm. and a lot of people have heard that. And she was serious, she was, she's a religious girl, but she said, don't worry, everything will be all right, you'll be all right, you know. To now believing that this is part two of her life, and this helping and create this awareness and so forth is her, why she's here. I now. believe that too, because I think since my stroke, I believe that I, I part two of my life, uh, be, I have to learn, help people with stroke. So I'm doing that. Um, you, you can expend a lot of energy trying to help people who haven't had strokes understand what it's like, but in the end they're not ever going to understand because they haven't experienced it. And simply by talking to others that say, um, me too, I know exactly what that's like, and you think, actually they do know exactly what that's like, um, really um, helped calm all of the grieving emotions that I was dealing with. You know, I'd mo moved through sadness and anger and, you know, I was out to change the world. Um, and just, you know, the validation of others who have experienced, it's like, oh, I can let it go. I don't need to have that fight. I can um, um, move through into acceptance and normalcy. Being inspired, being motivated, um, to give them the hope, because I think hope is important and confidence is important. Once you get the, uh, you know, little small steps and stuff, you know, they say wrinkling your toes um, was a milestone for me and, and that led to, you know, bending legs. It is overwhelming, there's no doubt it's um, scary and a uh, uh, road you don't know where, where it's going to lead to. But in that, in saying that, you've also got to make the, you just got to deal with it. So what's happened's happened. Um, you've just got to make the best of the situation and uh, keep on striving for uh, not accepting second best. You know, it's easy to accept second best. The depression was severe. Uh, after I left the hospital, I would not leave the house for two weeks. I cut off full communication from my family and cut off full communication from my friends. It started affecting my family. It started affecting my relationship with my partner and stepdaughters. Um, there was a couple of days where they didn't want to come and see me because they would lash out because I was keeping all this builds, builds up frustration because this was the stroke. So. Being told by a, a team of guys on a Friday afternoon the risks associated with the surgery. Um, so I had to have a conversation with my wife the night before the surgery about names for if he's a boy, we'll call him this, and because I might not be here tomorrow. Um, tremendously hard conversation to have, but it had to be had. Had to be had. And I woke up, you know, post surgery, and liberated in 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 some ways because the morning of the surgery, they put the drugs in me to put me to sleep, and I'm being wheeled out on a gurney, and I say goodbye to my mother and one of my sisters and my wife, and I told them I loved them and I hope to see you tomorrow. But I said to myself that I've recovered from this once, I can do it again. And you're not gonna cry until you've got some answers. Think about all those people that get dragged into it and all those friends and all that kind of stuff. I would rather give you good news than bad. So I didn't cry.
I didn't cry. I got good news and I could give good news. And, and what, uh, in terms of emotions for me, stroke has done, or facing those challenges has done, is it set me free to express my feelings, to tell people that you mean something to me. Um, if you're uncomfortable with that, that's your problem. It's not my problem. I'm going to tell you that I like you. I'm going to tell you that you mean something to me, that you're important in my life. I actively wanted to not have a little person affected by my stroke. I didn't want a child coming into the world with an unhappy dad. It was very important that I took active steps not to have that affect that person. I found writing things on the forums was particularly useful because it was a way of verbalising it. But uh, even if all you do is write in your diary, but write stuff down. Talk, if you can't talk to other people, talk to yourself. But just make sure it's positive talk. And sort of keep things going. You'd be surprised what you can do. It's okay to look in the rear vision mirror, but don't stare for too long. And it's true, because if you're looking back, you're not looking forward. And you, you're going to have all these negative emotions that stay with you, and anger and frustration. And it's not good sometimes to be like that. Because the people you're affecting, not yourself, but the people around you as well.